I don't know if there's any coming back for Kamala Harris. You guys have got to see this. Kamala Biden administration has been slow on their feet, not present. The response has been lackluster to say the least. Joe Biden was relaxing at the beach as the hurricane hit shore, and Kamala Harris was raising money with celebrities during a political fundraising event. And all the while as this was happening, guess who was present? Guess who was there? Of course it was Donald Trump. And so of course the initial perception was, what the hell, do these Democrats even care? Meanwhile, obviously there was a positive reception to Trump being on the ground and actually trying to get things done, you know, like a real leader. But of course, as we know, that can't be allowed now, can it? And so what's the media been doing? The media has been working overtime trying to convince you that Donald Trump is somehow a real bad guy. He's only doing this for political purposes. He's out there just trying to politicize and use the crisis for his own personal benefit. You know, this whole Donald Trump's in politics for personal benefit thing is just such utter nonsense considering all the harm this man has done to his life, his personal life, his reputation. By simply entering politics with an R next to his name. But anyways, that's been the claim that Donald Trump is politicizing this event, but I don't know how they can make that kind of argument when top Democrat strategists are saying crap like this. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that, then let's try to set the record straight. How could you possibly make a claim like that, that Donald Trump is politicizing this, and in reality, all he's doing is bringing attention to the situation that you have massively blundered. People in North Carolina lost their livelihoods, they lost their homes. What are they supposed to do? They don't have any resources. So what Donald Trump did is he teamed up with Elon Musk and he got Starlink connected for them so that they have the internet connection. He set up GoFundMes. He's doing everything in his power to help these people because he actually cares about the people. And the thing that you have to remember is Donald Trump right now, he holds no governmental position. He has no obligation to do a dang thing but he's only doing so because he knows it's the right thing to do. And I read that out of the 28 counties that were hit the hardest, 26 of them came out in full support of Donald Trump in that last election in 2020. So it makes you wonder why the help from FEMA is not coming as quickly as you would think it should. Donald Trump is apparently politicizing Hurricane Helene. Meanwhile, David Axelrod, who happens to be a contributor on CNN and former top advisor in the White House to Barack Obama, people in Asheville, which is blue, are much smarter and wealthier, and so they'll figure out how to show up to vote. Meanwhile, all those rural hicks voting for Trump, well, we're not so sure about that. Here's my question about North Carolina. You had these killer storms, which, by the way, was a third big story this week. Yes, these another killer another. storms. And there's a lot of displacement in western North right. Carolina. In, uh, now, Asheville is a blue dot in that area, but there are a lot of I was Republican say, voters Asheville's there. Key. But yeah. those voters in Asheville are, uh, they're, you know, the kind of voters who will figure out a way to vote. You know, they're upscale kind of liberal voters, and they're, they're probably going fi to figure out a way to vote. I'm not sure a bunch of these folks who've had their homes and lives destroyed elsewhere in western North Carolina in the mountains there are going to be as easy to um to, to, to wrangle for the Trump campaign. I'm absolutely floored. It's just yet again more evidence, another example, you know, this pattern of disgust that we see coming from the left. And it's happening all over. It's not just David Axelrod. This is actually what these people are hoping for. I mean, some of the comments that are popping up on my timeline, it's just ridiculous. Cenk Uger tweeted this, Remember, the Bible is pro-abortion. Numbers 151131 has a priest performing an abortion upon the command of God, if you think your wife cheated on you. So maybe God sent the hurricane to red states because he's mad that they out outlawed abortion. What? I mean, holy frickin' moly. And of course, there's more. Counting down till mega Republicans in Florida become socialists, begging for taxpayer handouts so they can rebuild in three, two, one. So when I seen the hurricane hit North Carolina and Tennessee, the first thing I thought was, damn, there goes some racists. There, there we go. We got some gone. And then I just seen this video that like the area it hit is like sundown town after sundown town after sundown town and they are just completely flattened and gone and I was like, God's work. I cannot believe there are people like this that actually exist. There are people dying, there are people losing their livelihoods and not only are you happy about it, but you're so happy about it that you record yourself with a video and post it online on social media because you think other people will feel the exact same way. And the thing that terrifies me is she probably posted this on social media and got thousands of likes. That just goes to show how deranged some people in this country are. I'm starting to think J.D. Vance might have been onto something when he said there's a lot of miserable old K 
cat ladies. They see people who support Donald Trump, America first patriots who are doing the right thing, who are actually advocating for the life of the unborn. They're advocating for more money in your pocket to actually prioritize the American citizen. But they couldn't possibly understand that because the only thing they see is abortion, my body, my choice. And honestly, I wish the best for these people, but I just sincerely hope I never have to cross paths with them. But like the area it hit is like sundown town after sundown town after sundown town and they are just completely flattened and gone. And I was like, God's work, God's work. Yeah, I think what I said earlier stands. It's a pattern of disgust. The mainstream media is so hyper fixated on Donald Trump. Donald Trump's such a bad guy. Why? Because Donald Trump's actually showing up and trying to do something. Meanwhile, Kamala Harris is just doing photo ops. Donald Trump's the bad guy. Meanwhile, look how the left's acting. It's the same pattern over and over again. And I always point to the same examples, whether it's their general calls to violence or encouraging of violence, the way they acted after the first and second attempted assassinations on President Donald Trump, the way the left reacted to the Covington kids, Donald Trump's brother passed away, Rush Limbaugh passing away, the list goes on and on. It's always the same despicable behavior. You know, the way I'd describe them is a real basket of deplorables. It's just absolutely horrible. And this specific example continues to build on the broader narrative that we've been talking about. That audio recording I just played for you guys is the epitome of the Democrats' detachment from the lives of ordinary people. This kind of narrative reveals a deeper truth. The Democrat Party, which was once a champion of the working class, has morphed into a party representing the interest of coastal elites, urban professionals and the wealthy. They're more concerned with the optics of political power than the devastating reality that many Americans are currently facing following natural disasters or even the most recent economic crisis. David Axelrod's framing there is not just dismissive, it's insulting and condescending. It implies that those struggling under the weight of rural poverty who have genuine grievances with the political establishment are somehow politically less capable or relevant in moments of crisis. Democrats, of course, love to paint themselves as the party of compassion, right? They're so tolerant and compassionate Passionate. And those Republicans, oh, those are bad people. But when they speak about people in rural counties, their disdain for these flyover states in small town America is clearly evident. And really, just to add some extra context there, let's play the clip that we played just a couple days ago. What are your thoughts on Kamala's trip to the border? Will that help her close the gap with Trump in Arizona? Uh, I don't think she needs Arizona. I mean... I don't think anyone needs Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Oh, Arizona with Putin. Here, take Arizona, leave Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. Trent, you're wearing cowboy boots. I mean, yeah. come on. You're even kind of showing some no, of the locals. And also, not from Arizona. You're, you're going to, I read your plugs, you're going to Nashville, right? And Is that in Arizona? No, but it's, <laughs> no, but it's a red state. I mean, you, you don't want to insult all the red states. You go there. I go there and I usually <laughs> say, really, Nashville? That's what I said. <laughs> but there are plenty of intelligent people in Nashville and in Arizona. They come out to see you. Not plenty. <laughs> <laughs> but look at their politicians, okay? Look at who they elect, okay? I'm not saying every single You elected person. Eric Adams. You just said he's a I smart. did not. I know, but <laughs> I New did York not. did. New York, brilliant I, New York. I, I did not. Okay. I don't mean to take shots at people. But if you take one look at this woman, you see that her looks are just as attractive as her personality. But for real, there are some wicked people in this country. How do you function with thinking this way? Are you that deranged? I mentioned how the people that were most affected by this hurricane too were people that came out in such staunch support of Donald Trump in 2020. So what they want to do, they want to disenfranchise these voters. They want them to say, oh, they're not going to bother going through all the hard work to actually vote for Donald Trump. But this is what I have to say for anyone who's voting for Kamala Harris in this next election. If that were you, she would be doing the exact same thing. Do you want to live in a country that determines how you get treated based off of who you vote for? Or do you want to vote for somebody who's actually going to work to benefit your life? I mean, Donald Trump is the clearest representation of that in Washington, D.C., probably ever. The man never took a presidential salary. He lost millions of dollars while in the White House. Do you think he's actually just trying to be a ruler and king and get more power? No. If he wanted to do that, he would have done it in his first term, and he would have made billions of dollars. It's abundantly clear his only goal and his only mission is to make our lives better, to preserve the American dream so that it's still around for your kids and your grandkids. Because as as it stands right now, if we have another four years of Kamala Harris, I believe the American dream will be forever dead. I do not think there will be any reviving it. It's the way they are importing migrants into these swing states, essentially diluting the vote of American citizens 
just so they can stay in power for longer and that they will never have to lose control. These are the acts of a tyrannical regime. We cannot allow these people to take power. Let me know your thoughts on this down below. Do you think that this hurricane in North Carolina, South Carolina will play any role in the election come November? You think Trump's going to lose voters, gain voters? Let me know. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions. And if you enjoyed, make sure to smash that like, comment, subscribe, and wish you guys nothing but the best. Till next time.